Jing jilai jong udrok hakeleng saudong gejela ke long haduk kata kata ke bapen long iki seng tremon sengau bha ke sorkar kiniam baper baper ban wan sekmat ban netrai lang ban pendu jait yau niu jing di pen buat ngobos niu ubalak ta yaki kun samla jong gejela ka kenun kinong elam niam jukiniam baper baper ke bok shatri ke silong all fakes forum hak santri kuno pra hajar apulai ke lapen long ya ke jing etai Kumno banyak kun persya, ya gani ke jingpang, kabala suhit haki kun samla. Ya gani ke jingelang la penlong hasan kier mauro silong, haka bau presiden kasaf, kumpishap kapalang church of north india, the most reverend doctor purely langdo, ula long ukong san, haka jing senran lang, jong usketri kasaf, father richard m majau, nang ta u director kasan kier u doctor cindy sim, kita kot jong kasaf, u reverend edwin h karkungor. Naga Balang Presbyterian, Reverend Nang Roy Suting, Naga Balang Unitarian, Udkot Kesain Rai, Uba Omar Lin Kendia, Pat Kewei Kewei. Untuk who was my friends who were seeing to ask me, had feel almost all my classes, I never attended classes, this made me realize that my life would go nowhere. It made me stress and I have, have no one to talk about my problems. I'm scared, so my only solution was to continue using drugs. And it took me no time to realize that I cannot live without drugs. I have to live with it. It has affected my education, my relationships with my family, and people that do care about me. Yes, it has affected me and my family financially, emotionally, physically, and mentally. There was a time I started uh, stop taking drugs by my own. I substitute using other substances. It took me only a few weeks and relapsed and turned back to cross. I realized I cannot do it on my own. And in a few years past, my parents found out about my drug use. They immediately took me to rehabilitation that is here in San here. And they were so kind, they didn't judge me or hate me. <clears throat> At first, I was a bit mad about why they brought me to this place. Because of my suffering, I was kind of having mixed emotions. I don't know what to do. I tried everything I could to get the pain I was in. One month, one month passed and my withdrawals had really reduced and I didn't use any drugs ever since, up to this day. I haven't used any kinds of drugs. And my relationship with my family has grew stronger and I've begun to gain strength, mentally stable and <coughs> mentally stable. But in the process of covering, I've experienced many things like hallucinations and thoughts and all seeing things that aren't there and hearing voices telling me to things to hurt myself and my family, things that are in there. <clears throat> uh, I would wake up in the middle of the night only to wake up in the morning with cuts on my hands, wrists and blood everywhere. And I started having depression and many negative thoughts. <clears throat> I am 23 years old. I was born in place in Shillong. At the age of 15, I was smoking ganja, delvite, tobacco daily, multiple times a day. Uh, <clears throat> smoking ganja helped me forget who I was. Since that was it, I love it. That, that's exactly what I wanted at that point in my life. And soon found out that everyone around me was drinking alcohol, so I thought I would try it. Try it. <clears throat> the truth is, I didn't like drinking, but it was socially acceptable, so I drank as much as I could. At the age of 17, I began to wonder, I began to realize I was not good at school or sports, so what am I going to do with my life? I was hang, hanging around with the wrong people and started to use heroin for the first time. Uh, one of my mistakes was bringing this, this substance to class to share, share with my classmates, who has never, never taken drugs. And it was my fault that I dragged him into it, but I'm grateful he got out of drugs before me. <clears throat> From what I remember, it was to be cool to fit in with a certain crowd. As far as I could remember, I didn't fit in with anyone and wanted to be part of something. I felt worthless from a young age and I developed into an even lower self-esteem as a teenager. And to be normal, I had to continuously using heroin, ganja, and dynamite in every day. Sometimes I would borrow, borrow money from people, thousands and thousands of rupees, and started manipulating people, family and friends, so I could get the money. <clears throat> Drugs had made, me, had made my life worse, 
sometimes I would find myself awake sleeping on roads, footpaths, purses, and my relationships with my family has gotten worse. I never spoke to them whenever I came home. I was, I mean, actually, I, I don't know. I, 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 could, I couldn't accept myself, and I couldn't uh, really find help. But uh, I believe through the prayer of my wife, my sister, my mother, my father, and everyone who are close to me. God answers that prayer. I was brought here in the year 2007, during the month of March. And I know nothing about this institute, it's this place here. Then I learned from the lessons, from the classes, from every each and every se uh, session, from different angles. From doctors, point of view and the counselor point of view from the uh, astral point of view and so I could gather something but I failed in during 2007. I was again brought back in the brought not coming I was brought in 2008 in the month of January that time a little bit understanding is there but I find that the acceptance is not in my heart. My mind. acceptance that I am an addict who has having a disease till the, till the end of my life. I from this institute I have learned number one humility. To know to know to accept myself. And I'm very grateful to Doctor and his colleagues, the counselors, the, the, the nurses, so many who are helping me to stand in front of you. And this uh, manners, my status has gone down, and some of the sections of the people trying to help me to stand up again. But I refuse. Uh, be it from uh, locality, from my little close relatives, be from the, the women's organization, be from my church itself, they have come to help me to stand again. But I refused. Then I was admitted here, and I find God, some blessing, God's hand, this place in the institute. And that was, that happened not during 2007, during 2008 it happened. Sometimes in the month of uh, July perhaps, I couldn't recollect the date. I was asked by the doctor, by Dr. Sanji's name, how I feel, then how I feel the time, then what is the purpose of living or staying away from the, the, this uh, uh, alcohol which had taken. I replied to him that uh, I'm, I'm very, feel very pity for my daughter. She's growing up, and my wife as well. I feel pity about them, so I'm going to need to change. Then that that very day, before I go to sleep, because we we'll here we were taught to pray in the morning and the evening and the night. So I pray the Sanjeev prayer. I used to pray the Sanjeev prayer. That is very moment meaningfully. Then I heard this voice sounding somewhere, it's for you. Then I get up, I get up, then I sit for a while, then I pray again. Then from that moment itself, I accept that I am a recovering person, I am an addict, I have a disease till the end of my life. But there are certain things which have been taught to address that and how to walk. We have the 12 steps uh, program towards the healthiness. We have those are the guidelines which I can walk. I can walk them uh, every day. So I am very indebted. God, God, God grant us, grant us the, serenity the serenity to accept the things, accept the things. we cannot change. We cannot change. Knowledge. 
and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. I try, to
God who is the creator of all things. The God who has made us, each one of us and all of us, with a body, with a mind and with a soul. I believe that we all believe in this God. The God who has made us alive, person, with the body, mind and soul. Number two, I also believe that we all believe that because God has made us, so we all belong to Him. We all belong to Him. Irrespective, we all are God's people. This is a forum of different faiths, communities. Because He has made us, so we all are God's people. In this program on uh, Adis, and how appropriate it is for such a subject, for such uh, an issue, we are meeting here in this center, in this hospital, where Dr. Sandy is the man on the job. Uh, who will lead us, guide us, and explain to us uh, what is this all about and how do we go forward as religious faith leaders, religious leaders in Shalom, uh, in dealing with this huge, huge problem, drug abuse. Yes, friends, we read about it. We hear, we read about it in the print media. We hear about it in the electronic media. Almost every day, drugs, drugs, drugs. Every day. In Shalom, the state of Middle and in all over the world. All over the world. Probably, as Pastor has already said, probably some of some of you see it with your own eyes and experience it in the locality, in your neighborhood, and perhaps relatives in the family. How much this problem, how much drugs has caused havoc in the lives of those who have succumbed to this problem, addiction. The Muslim, Islam, Christian, Hindus, Unitarians, anything, all are God's people. Irrespective of nationality, irrespective of, of race, or creed, or caste, or or position in life or anything else we are God's people in this world God's world <coughs> number three therefore I believe I believe that because we are God's people our bodies our minds and our souls are precious and valuable to God for the purpose that God has made us. See, that's purpose is very important word. For the purpose that God has made us. God never did, never did, God will never do anything without a purpose and therefore you all, each one of us who are here we have a purpose given by God He has given us a body, mind and soul for a purpose and that is very very important for us to remember to keep in mind what is the purpose of God for us? 